Hello, what's going on guys? It's Meg Reed here. Welcome back to another tour review by yours truly. Today is going to be a rather short one. So, uh, any, so let's get right into it then. This is a Bakugan review. Um, if you didn't read the title already, at least by the time I post this. This is Bakugan Geogon Rising Demork Ultra. So this is another Ultra Bakugan for Geogon Rising. And... Uh, I don't really know much about this character other than he just looks pretty cool. I'll give him that. I hope he's actually cool in the animation, even though I don't watch it that much. Mostly just because it's very... How do I put this? It's more of a... It's, it's a little more of a show for younger children, I would say, than people like myself who could really get invested in. But anyway, at least the, well, at least the toys are still cool. It's sad the animation's more childish than it was back in its first generation, way back 2006. But anyway, enough about that. So, back to Gun Jail Gun Rising right there. We have a nice art of Demwork right there, looking all cool and such. Ultra Bakugan, Demwork Ultra. He is darkest. The box is flopping apart. That's always fun. Let's see if we can get to the back of the box here. Back of the box, we have Bakugan Geogun Rising logo right there again with Demwork Ultra. And the colors are a bit off on them, but of course these are just CG renders and not, comp not totally accurate to the actual figure, obviously, because I mean the wings. Yeah, the little shoulder pad things are purple. But the wings themselves back there are not black, or at least not that solid of a black anyway. So Demwork Ultra right there. We do have all the contents and all that good stuff. Join the app. And we have the leap into Beku action right there with all the other figures listed down there. Including, I believe that is a Diamond Shark Tower right there. Might have to look out for him. But anyhow, let's get the box out of the way. Get my phone propped up because I almost dropped it. That's why I was kind of holding it at a weird angle. And let's actually take a look at the figure itself. But before we do, we'll take a look at the cards that comes with it. So in the so in the pack, you do get two shield cores. I'm not going to bother reviewing those or, in, or discussing those in the review because they're pretty generic. They're not really anything too interesting. However, the cards are actually interesting. So first up, we get the character card, which, as you can see on the back, is very, very nicely detailed oddly it's using the battle planet backing with all the factions listed out the pyrus Chaos, oralis ventus darkus and aquas right there so that's pretty cool and then on the back we do have the actual render itself of demorc ultra and he does look quite nice i gotta say he definitely looks like a demon and an orc uh, had a baby so very impressive looking art there and of course you get the 700 Bs right there, the 4 damage, and the 2 shield cores right there. And we do get the nice little dark symbol right there at the bottom, traditional stuff. So we'll get that out of the way. Then next we do get a repeat card, which is Rage and Claw, which is very nice. And see we have a darkest Farascal right there attacking Demwork, so that's pretty cool. And of course, I already looked at this before, so I'm not going to go too much into it, but still, cool stuff, nonetheless. Lastly, we do get a gate card, which is this one. And I love the art on it. It's actually, I believe this is Hyper Phaedrus? I want to say that's Hyper Phaedrus, I'm pretty sure. And, uh, and yes, um, I don't know if I mentioned it in my original Phaedrus review, but Phaedrus does in fact have wings. Very, very strange, I know. Because it's supposed to be based off a Chinese dragon, and last time I checked, Chinese dragons don't have wings. But anyway, so uh, we do have her there looking very, very schnazzy, and I believe that's her hyper form. Correct me in the comments if I am wrong. And we do have the stats right here, or the boosts and negative boosts right here. So first we get 700 for Pyrus, negative 200 for Aquos, negative 200 for Ventus, 700 for Chaos, negative 200 for Aurelis, and 700 for Darkus. So, all around, uh, it seems like this card is more aimed towards Pyrus, Chaos, and Darkus users, not so much for Aquas, Ventus, and, and Oralus users, so be wary of that. Now, I don't know if, now, I should mention this right now, because I forgot to mention this before, but I'm pretty certain that the cards are actually random with each, with each, with each, with each copy. Uh, I don't know why I'm stuttering so hard. Uh, so, for example... Uh, my darkest Demorc Ultra may have a different card than your copy of it. 
Again, I'm not for 100% sure, but I'm fairly certain that each card is random, so just be aware of that. I believe all the gate cards are random. And I'm pretty sure also the ability cards are also random, so... Not the character cards, obviously, because... Why would those be random? So let's put the gate card right there. Actually, we're going to move it off to the side. We'll put it back on later. And let's take a look at the actual ball form here of Demork Ultra. So as you guys can see, it does look very, very nice with the standard darkest fair of purple, uh, oddly gray, green, black, you know, your traditional darkest colors. On the bottom, you will see as it spins around, there's a darkest logo sort of peeking out at the bottom. And we do have some ports for the, uh, what you might call it, the uh, Beku gear. So you can put those on onto Demwork. Uh, you can put those on his arms, I believe on his tail. And I think that's really about it for him. So now that we've taken a look at the completed ball form, which let me just stop the turn style right there. Let's just put out the gate card and let's open him up. And once we actually get his head flopped down, there you go. That is Demork Ultra. All in all, for an Ultra Bakugan, he's not that bad looking. He's actually quite impressive. I do like the colors he has. I do like his I do like the choice colors of the uh, purple, black, green, and gray. I love the fact that he just looks like he's just lunging out with his claws all sharp and ready to slash at you. Looks really nice. Um, I do like the fact that the little, like, skirt, I guess, or, like, the little front, um, little tarp, I guess. I don't know if it's a tarp, but the little piece of cloth on the lower torso por portion is actually molded into the legs. I think that's a really nice attention to detail. Um, I do like the head. The head is actually very nicely molded, as you guys can kind of see as it spins around. The eyes are very very nicely detailed so I'm glad that Spin Master is putting a lot more attention to those sort of details. I'm actually giving you guys a little a bit of an up close from a side angle and so that way you guys can actually see the really nice detail in the face. I'm very very impressed by just how much detail they're putting into these um, newer Bakugan releases. I'm very very pleased about that. So let me just quickly go back to the medium speed on the turnstile there. And all in all, Demork is very, very solid. The only really complaint I have for this ball form, for this figure is that the wings are a bit too small. Just saying that, and it's very, it's somewhat difficult to distinct which wings are the are the wings and which ones are his shoulder pads. Because at first I thought he had four pairs of wings, but then I realized those are not those little things are not actually pairs of wings, but in fact shoulder pads. Maybe they could have molded it to make it so so the shoulder pads stick out a little more flat instead of sticking up looking like an extra pair of wings. Because I, as I just said, they're not. But still. For what he is, he's very, very nice and a welcomed addition to the Armored Alliance lineup. Not Armored Alliance lineup. The Geoga Rising lineup, my apologies. And something else to also mention is that the head is actually on a loose pin because of the transformation back to ball form. He does, in fact, actually, uh, whatchamacallit, he does uh, have a little bit of a floppy head so you can flop his head back and make him look up like that if you wanted to. Not that you would want to, but you can still do that with him. Now for some quick comparisons, we're going to compare him to some Geogon uh, Rising Bakugan here, which I only have one at the time of this recording. I do have extras in storage. I'm just actually waiting for the optimal time to review those. But anyway, for comparison, and of course we have our floppy boy Elemental Rare Dragonoid Ultra, Pyrus Dragonoid. And as you guys can see, the two of them look very, very nice together. Now I should also mention that there is a Elemental Rare Demorc figure from what the pamphlet uh, describe entails. There is a Elemental Rare version of him. I will definitely be keeping my eyes open, and my, and my eyes not open, but my eyes peeled for him because it's going to be, because that one looks very, very impressive from what I've seen from other reviewers. It does look very nice. And of course, since Elementals are ultra rare, 
you know, that also adds to the collectability and the, uh, you know, it also adds to the value of the figure, so... Because you guys would be surprised for how much um, Diamond Bekagon from that go back as Battle Planet are going for these days. A Diamond, a, a mint condition Diamond Core Dragonoid, which by the way was one of the hardest Bekagon to find during the first couple waves of Battle Planet back in 2017, I want to say, 2017, 2018. Those, that guy can fetch you these days, a, 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 like a little over $100. It's actually insane how much people are asking to, to for that. And the DECA is even worse because they also released a DECA Diamond uh, Core Dragonoid. And that too is very expensive because of just how rare it is. That and because it's Dragonoid, the most popular character in the series, so obviously he's going to be expensive. But still, uh, for what it's worth, these two do not look all that bad together. They actually scale really, really well. And uh, as soon as the turn style turns back around, we're going to do some more comparisons here. So let me just quickly speed this up a little bit. And then bring it to a halt. Okay. Let me click the button. Wait, no. Let me just get it to medium speed again. Okay. And then let me stop the turnstile. Okay. Mm, let's spin the background like that. And let's get uh, some other back on for comparisons. And by some, I mean like two more because I'm not bringing out the entire crew for this one. Just because it's just unnecessary for this review to have all of them there. So for comparison, for our next one, we're going to bring in um, Diamond Talon Geogon for comparison, or Geogon Diamond Talon. As you guys can see, compared to Talon, he's much, much bigger, but that's just because he's a Geogon, and Geogons are gen generally more dynamic, much larger, much more uh, intricate, and more elaborate transformations. Um, so for what he is, he, um, for, for what he is, aka an Ultra Bakugan, he's not too bad of a size. And it's, and again, it's not too far off for, for how big the actual monster form side by side scale. So that's, so I'm pretty impressed by that. The only one that I actually have a bit of an issue with, at least from what I've seen from pictures, is this Geogon named Stingzer, as he is fairly small for a Geogon, even though his actual monster form is friggin' ginormous. But still, um, most of them, so from that point of view, I guess, they mostly scale, mostly scale properly. And for our last comparison for this afternoon, we're gonna bring in um, Heos Arachnia Trap. So, not Trap. Geogon, I'm sorry. I keep confusing them with their G1 sort of counterparts, I guess if you want to call it that. But, again, still. Uh, and this is fairly accurate. I will say this is fairly accurate because, um, Arachnia is genuinely, is, is generally a smaller, uh, Geogon, uh, compared to the rest of the Geogon of, of the series thus far, of the season, she's actually a smaller one so this scale is actually quite accurate as she she as she is indeed very large you know like width wise but height wise she's a tiny one so and uh I, if i didn't correct it already i will mention that arachnia is in fact female it is not male so if i did say male in my review just just pretend i said female because that was an oopsie there so let me quickly move these figures out of the way and close up Arachnia, let me bring back Demork into view here. And with all that being said, and that is going to wrap up this review on Bekagon Geogon's Rising, or Geogon Rising, uh, Darkest Demork Ultra. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to drop a like on this video. Uh, like, like on this video. Yeah, drop a like on this video, mate. <laughs> um, share this video with your friends. And, and let me know in the comments if you want to see Mo. <laughs> and with all that being said, oh, and one last thing, make sure to turn on those notifications, so that way you guys get notified of all my videos, and I will see you guys in the next video that I do. Let's squad, and have a good one, mates.